Hey everyone, it's Mr. Dave here. As you guys know, Photoshop for iPad launched uh, this week and wanted to do a quick comparison to what you can do inside Photoshop compared to Affinity, specifically when it comes to compositing images. So first, uh, if I pop over here, I'm gonna take a look at this somewhat basic poster that I created in Affinity Photo and uh, everything was composited inside of Affinity, so I cut everything out, color graded, LUTs, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and I'm gonna try to, as best as possible, replicate a lot of the tasks that I was able to do inside of Affinity in Photoshop. And uh, just to cut directly to the end result, what you're going to find is Photoshop version one is not even close to being in the same field as Affinity Photo for iPad. Uh, I, I think, you know, obviously Photoshop has come out and been very transparent in the fact that they are going to be upgrading Photoshop for iPad aggressively. But uh, at this point, I will give you my opinion of what I think Photoshop in its current state uh, is useful for in terms of workflow. So if we pop over here, uh, I've already imported this picture and uh, you can see here, uh, my plan is I'm going to cut him out uh, and start compositing. You can see to add a new file, you just simply click here, click files, <clears throat> and I can start adding my photos uh, one at a time. Hit done, add another one. Uh, we know we need the boat and uh, we can, uh, Click done, and we'll add one more. So there we have it. So over here we have our different layers, and this is sort of the quick layer mode. I can go into the traditional layer mode that you're used to in either Photoshop or Affinity, uh, but I've gotten used to this one. It's, it's not bad. Uh, so if we go ahead and just start on the boat here, uh, to do a selection, you can come over here, and if you double click or if you long click, they have a lasso, a quick select, and then your uh, square and, and circle selection. So for quick select, we'll select that. And you can see here, we've got add or subtract. And then here you can determine the size of your brush and the feathering of, uh, or, of your brush or your selection tool. So we'll go ahead and add. Now the one thing that this doesn't have, at least that I haven't found, is it doesn't have any sort of tolerance settings so I can't increase or decrease the tolerance. I'm going to just select this boat. And you can see for the most part, it does an okay job. Unlike actual Photoshop on the desktop and or Affinity Photo, is there is no refine. And for objects like this boat, I suppose that's okay. I'll show you how you can get around that. but. When we go to select specifically the man and his hair, uh, without having the refine button, it just, it's really not gonna work, honestly. Uh, Photoshop for the iPad at this stage is gonna look very much like someone who is already using Photoshop for the desktop and is doing the bulk of their compositing work on their desktop. So they're cutting all of the items out, they're doing any color corrections, they're getting all their assets in place. And then they maybe want to do compositing on the go or move away from the desk and relax on the couch and have a more creative flow to compositing. I think that would work okay in, in Photoshop for iPad, at least version one, because once your assets are in here, it has the basics of blend modes and the ability to work with layer masks, etc. I'm not gonna spend any more time on this. Uh, from here, I can come down here and just hit the mask button. And there we go, we have our, our boat mapped out. Um, you can see in here, I would need to come in and clean that up. There's no pen tool. There's really two ways that I found that you can do this. So one is you can continue to use the quick selection, just like this. It does an okay job. Uh, then over here, making sure that your mask is selected, you can flip between the actual photo and the mask, making sure the mask is selected. You could come here, select your brush, and then paint on black. 
but even still then you can see you'd have to come in and do some cleanup. The other method is using the lasso tool. This works pretty good too if you're using a pencil because I can come in here and just draw like that and then switch over to the paintbrush and just paint that out. It does a pretty good job, especially for something like this where this isn't going to be a huge image. It's going to be more in the background and I'm going to have a lot of colors over it. All right, so I'm not going to spend any more time on that, but you can see for the most part, I was able to cut out a boat. Not bad. If we come back to this guy, this is where it's going to be really difficult. So I'll use the quick selection. Oh, man. All right, let's try this again. <laughs> yeah. Again, not having a tolerance is making this rough. Dang, is my brush too big? It's not that big. All right. Uh, you can see this is not going well. I don't think it's anything I'm doing. Even if this other part was going well, at this point, I'm at the hair, and there's really nothing I can do to refine that. You know, if I come down here, the only options I have are select similar, transform, I can, in I can invert, but that's really about it. The other option I have is I can use this lasso tool and try to draw around the face like that. Definitely not ready for prime time. There you have it. So obviously if I were to mask that, uh, that is ugly. <laughs> I mean, let's just say what it is. It's ugly. I mean, now obviously from here I could come in with a brush um, black and sort of try to fade this away, bring the the feather down and sort of sit here and do this and I mean I can make it work right I mean I could come in here and by the time I added gradients and I could come in here with a a fine paintbrush and sort of kind of blend the hair in so it looked more natural I just sort of feathered the edges but I had to do that manually as you guys know in both Affinity and Photoshop for desktop, there is the refine tool button. You could just hit and <laughs> select a few settings and it would kind of, ref it would do all this for me. It would smooth and feather. And so if we brought all this back, there we go. Now here's the last thing I'll show you that I haven't found out how to do it, which is a, a bit crazy, but um, there is no way to draw a shape in here. So in this scenario where I've got these lines, these squares, in order to do that, I pretty much would just have to draw this. I'd have to fill it just like that, deselect, and then, yeah, I'd have to do one of these numbers, which isn't horrible. I mean, it works. It's just weird, though, that there's no shape tool, right? And that works great if you've got, you know, rectangles or circles but if you're trying to do any other shape yeah there's not there's not a way to do that I mean you guys know in here you've got all of these different shapes that you can make so pretty much again you would have to pre-make the shapes in Photoshop desktop have your assets ready to go and then you know you could do a lot of this compositing but even in this scenario here where this so you see this face right so you've got if I come in here and look at his face. I've got a curves adjustment and I've got a gradient. I can't do a curves uh, in here. So I could do a gradient if I wanted to, something like that. And then I would have to clip this mask, change this to multiply and sort of adjust the gradient like this, which is not ideal. But I can go in here and do a clipped adjustment. And these are the only options it gives me. Brightness, exposure, color balance, hue, saturation, levels, and vibrance. That's it. I could do color. And I could try to make him more red. I can essentially do what I did with the curves. But yeah, down here effects. It's not, <laughs> it's not available yet. Smart filters not available yet I could start out oh, see that's that's interesting so I have this gradient clipped 
to here. But if I move the face around, it doesn't stay with it. Let's see if I can do a multi-select. All right, so let's select these three. Ah, let's link them. Let's try that. There we go. OK, well, that was a pain. So you can link them. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you're someone that uses Photoshop on the desktop, you're, all you want to do is be able to do some work on the go, but know that that's not your start and ending spot. You're already paying for the subscription. Give Photoshop a go. If you're looking for something to solely do compositing on your iPad, Photoshop's not even an option at this point. All right, well, I hope that was useful, guys. Um, I will try to do some more videos where I actually do some compositing in Photoshop for iPad, but uh, thanks for watching, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button.